everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we explore the hidden past to Kirby Muxlow, one of Leicestershire's unfinished moated 15th century castles that was left as we wonder it today when its owner was executed for treason. So join us as we take a wonder and we explore these beautiful castle remains. Its owner was William, Lord Hastings, who was the Lord Great Chamberlain of England and was granted a licence from Edward VI to fortify four manor houses in the area of Leicestershire. One of these was at his family seat in Kirby Muxlow, which he began to build in 1480 on the site of a previous manor house that was once built by the Pakement family. William's instructions were clear. It was to be a moated courtyard residence that would be entered for a great, formidable gatehouse and fortified with towers and battlements, a true sign of the power and wealth that Lord Hastings donned. Much of what we were able to find out and know about the building of Kirby Castle has been down to the survival of the building accounts from October of 1480. Four years later, all of the castle's building works were grinded to a halt and the castle remained unfinished, for reasons I'll tell you about later. As we enter through the gatehouse doors, you walk inside the castle's ticket office, then on to the guard road room for the guard on duty, then a short walk across to the other building in the gatehouse, which shows us the beautiful red bricked guard room, designed to hold the heavy guns if needed in the line of battle but the gun ports were some of the very earliest in England to exist. Their function and their shape allowed the firing lines to be altered, and just above them are arrow slits for sighting of the guns. The building was planned around a courtyard design within the existing and impressive moated site, and it originally planned to have four towers at either of the corners. Only one of those towers was built, and one that still survives and is standing at its original and full height, which we get to partially explore later. Connecting the towers would have been a circuit of walls that would have made quite the impression, and it would have also been imposing battlements that would have surrounded the site. Within the walls of the courtyard, there would have been your usual domestic and residential buildings, and a great grand hall, of course. Amazingly, what was unfinished is still quite impressive in size and its looks too. William created a fortified house of red brick that was surrounded by a picturesque wide moat. Sadly, work on the castle came to an end before it was finished. Lord Hastings met an untimely end when he was executed on the 13th of July of 1483 by the future King Richard III in the Tower of London. It is not known why Richard came to this hasty decision to be rid of his friend and advisor, but speculations are that it appears that Richard thought Hastings was plotting against him. Sadly, Hastings was never really given an opportunity of a trial in which to contest any allegations that were made against him. We next head up the spiral staircase and into the gatehouse's upper room. I have to say the red brick really stands out amongst the black windows and doors. It was more than likely that the unfinished floor was above this upper room, as in the four corner turret rooms they all feature a ruined staircase leading up. One thing that is super impressive and worth a look when you get the chance to visit here is to look out for the large slot that would have once housed a portcullis mechanism. This acted as a secondary gate to the drawbridge, which would have also been operated and in use in this area. I think the views here are just so serene and peaceful. No matter the viewpoint, you really are greeted and you can see why Hastings made this place less for defence and more for its pleasure by its surroundings.
Work on the castle ceased immediately when the news came to Kirby of Lord Hastings' death, and although the widow of Lord Hastings was later issued with a special grant of restoring the family's inheritance, the castle was eventually abandoned and gradually fell into decay until it was later restored between 1911 to 1913. And it has been speculated that Richard's compassion to Widow Hastings was an indication of his regret over his hasty actions. But that is something that we'll never know for certain. At this very moment, the castle has Canadian geese and herons enjoying the grounds, and in particular some of them are actually nesting, which is of course a beautiful sight, but just be prepared for some territorial geese heading your way as you explore the courtyard and its grounds. Other than that, I really do think it adds to the experience for a nice wonder here. One of my favourite things to have learnt about visiting here was the way that Hastings liked to fashion his houses or his castles. And in the height of his power and wealth, he knew that that would be what would make him stand out from the others. The castle was built from local red brick, with stone that was used for detailing, such as on the windows and the doors. And it was a combination that was at its peak for fashion on buildings. He also enrolled the help of four masons, who were paid to create pictures in the walls by using darker bricks. Later, if you rewind to the beginning of the video when we take a walk across the moat, you'll notice the black bricks amongst the red on the gatehouse front, with the initials of WH, the Hastings coat of arms, a ship and a jug, and several crosses. When I left the castle, I took a step back just to realise how impressive this work is, and how effective it would have looked. Something else you might notice is the empty niche that sits right above the gatehouse door. It was originally designed to hold a sculpted panel of the Hastings arms, but it was never completed and was left empty. One thing that I enjoy seeing and reading about is the family's coat of arms and how they look, and the different emblems that they have. Hastings' emblem was surrounded by a helm with the family's crest of a bull's head, then circling the shield is a blue garter, which was the insignia of the Order of the Garter that the Lord Hastings belonged to. As we take a look inside the beautiful West Tower, which was the only surviving tower and the only other part of the castle to actually have a room on all three stories of its building. All were connected by a spiral staircase. Each of these rooms had a lavatory and a fireplace, which would almost suggest that the rooms in this building were indeed intended as chambers for senior guests or important members of the household staff. 
you can still see the remains of the beam holes where the timber beams would have been placed to section off the floors, as well as the entrances to the rooms on the different floors of the tower. Within the centre of the castle would have been the courtyard and their gardens, and even possibly a stable for their horses. The castle and the village of Kirby is a wonderful afternoon spent out, or morning if you're in the area, and want to see this iconic ruin, we really don't think you'll be disappointed. There is ample parking right outside the castle, and we'd say that the castle is semi-accessible to wheelchair users, but just sitting amongst the courtyard is worth it, just to watch the world go by. We hope you've enjoyed a wonder of us, and we've encouraged you to want to visit here. If you've liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button, and consider joining our members on the channel, or our Patreon. Why not hit the bell icon so you'll always know when we upload a new video, and support us by clicking that subscribe button. We want to say a big thank you to our channel members and our Patreons for their support. We'll see you in the next one. Till next time.